everybody and welcome to part three of my differential series. I'm very excited to today to present to you a method for designing n to p gear ratios using differentials where n and p are prime. Uh, so for example I've created this differential here which gives us a gear ratio of 421 to 313 with both those cores being prime. Uh, now this technique that I have come up with allowed me to design this which otherwise obviously would have been quite difficult. So I'll just present to you how I've done it. So we'll start by reviewing the differential relationship. So in this diagram here I've got uh, a, an abstract differential in the middle there called D1. It's got the input axle A and axle B and an output C coming from the barrel. So the relationship between A, B and C is simply that the output C is the average of A and B. So that's just A plus B divided by 2. So in part two I presented solutions for the 1 to n differential problem uh, where n is prime. Uh, so for example here we've got a differential, we've got our input axle, we've got our output axle, and we've got a connection between the output uh, with a gear ratio of b uh, back to this, gear, uh, this axle here and also a connection between the output through a gear ratio c uh, back to the barrel. And if we do the uh, mathematics and work out the uh, ratio between the output and the input, we find that it's 1 over 2c minus b. And of course c and b are what I call um, products of Lego prime, so they have to be products of 2, 3, 5 and 7. So for example c could be 3 times 3 times 5 times 7, so that's the gearing ratio for c, um, and similar for b. So to design a particular 1 to n gear ratio, we just need to solve this equation here, 2c minus b is equal to n, where n is our uh, prime that we're wanting to create. And what I've done here is generate a number of computer generated solutions for n is equal to 421. So this shows you some of the possible values for c and b. So for example, c could be 7 by 5 by 3 by 2, and b equals minus 1, and that gives us a solution for generating the 421 to 1 gear ratio. So what we're trying to achieve today is to design an n to p gear ratio uh, where n and p are prime and you might think well that sounds pretty easy we already know how to design a 1 to n and a p to 1 using the technique from before we can just put those in series to create a, um, an n to p either in this configuration or in this configuration now the problem with that is, is that because n and p might be quite large like for example 421 to 313 trying to turn a 421 gear ratio in reverse in practice is, is almost impossible. So for example this is 421 to 1 and this is the one I presented last week and of course it turns fine in this direction but trying to turn it in reverse well, it, it doesn't work at all and of course for higher gear ratios it's going to be even worse. Uh, you can turn it from there. So how do we get around that problem? So what I did, I looked at this topology here, uh, where we've got the differential 1 and differential 2 in series using the 1 to n and the 1 to p uh, configurations, and I thought, well, what would happen if instead of connecting this output to back to the second differential, what if I connect it back to the first one, and I connect the first one, the input, to the second one? So in that case, we've got this topology, uh, we've connected the output to D1 and input to D2 and these are still the same. And I've also generalized the uh, gearing between the connections to be of a fractional form, so it's an up gearing and a down gearing. And as a result we know a lot of different parameters. So on the left here we've got A0 over A1, we've got A2 over A3 connecting to um, differential 2. From the output we've got B2 over B3 connecting to barrel D1. And from the output we've also got B0 to B1 over to D2 and in the middle we've got a ratio of C0 to C1. And of course all the parameters are products of what I call Lego Prime, so that's the products of any combination of 2, 3, 5 and 7 to just generate any gearing ratio that you can in Lego. Alright, so how do we work out the relationship between the output O and the input I? So that's the gearing ratio uh, between O and I. And of course when you look at this and kind of try to do it, uh, you're trying to work out, say for example, the output here depends on this input here and that input there, and of course this input here 
depends on that one and that one and that depends back on the beginning and on the output so it does all get a bit confusing um, but it can be done uh, it comes down to introducing an intermediate node called X and so this for example this gear uh, axle here and by going through the math I won't go through all the details but what it comes down to is that the output over the input is determined by this large equation here now this is quite a complicated looking equation but if we study it in detail we can notice some similarities to the 1 to P uh, ratio and that is the form of that top line and the bottom line is very similar and in, in the other equation we've got 2 times C minus B so if we imagine all this being C and all this being minus B then we can use the same solutions that we already got and uh, that were computer generated and also we can look at this part here B1 B3 over A1 A3 and because O and I are products uh, are primes they cannot be products that means that B1, B3 over A1, A3 must equal to 1. Uh, it doesn't mean that each of these individually are 1, but it does mean that the ratio must be equal to 1. Okay, so how do we go about using this equation to actually design a particular N to P differential? Well, what I've done, I've created a bit of a worksheet here, and in this example I've got the equation here, as per before, and we have got the desired N to P gear ratio, so in this case I've chosen 313 to 421 uh, and what we've got to do is choose all the parameters from A0 to C1 that will satisfy that equation so what we do first we start by finding all the possible solutions for the 313 gear ratio and what we're going to do is pick the top one which is um, that C has to be 1 and B is going to be 315 which is 7 by 5 by 3 by 3. So I'm going to write that down just up here. So we've got 1 and we've got 7 by 5 by 3 by 3 and this has to be negative because of the sign here. And then we'll do the same for the 421. Uh, we've got the top solution there is 7 by 5 by 3 by 2 and B equals minus 1. So we again need to reverse those signs. So we've got over here we've got 7 by 5 by 3 by 2 and a 1 over here. So what we need to do is to make A1, A2, C1 equal to 1 and similarly A0, A3, C0 equal to this part B1, B2, uh, C0 this part and B0, B3, C1 minus 1. Just looking at this, so obviously if uh, A1, A2, C1 is equal to 1, that must mean that A1, A2 and C1 are all equal to 1 themselves. So we can write that down, we can write A1 is 1, A2 is 1, and C1 is 1. Similarly down here we've got B0, B3, C1 is equal to minus 1, so that means that each individually these must be uh, equal to 1 as well, but obviously one of those has to have a minus 1 sign. So it doesn't really matter which one you choose, it's up to you, so I'll just choose B0 is to be minus 1, and then we'll set B3 to 1, and C1 uh, is already 1. So I just confused myself there with C1, so uh, what makes it simple is just to cross out the ones you've already done. So we've already done A1, A2, uh, B0, B3, and C1. So that just eliminates all the options that we haven't filled in yet. Uh, so next we need to figure out what we're going to do with 7, 5, 3 and 3 and we're going to allocate that to A0, A3 and C0. Um, now a good trick is to always try to uh, use the B1, B3 and A1, A3 combinations to reduce the gearing ratios within the entire structure. And what we need to do is try to choose uh, A3 and A1 so that they eliminate each other. So in this case we've got some commonality, we've got a 5 and a 3 in common and a 7 and a 7 and here the difference is a 2 and a 3 so what I've chosen to do is allocate 5 and 3 to um, A3 so I'm going to write A3 is 3 times 5 and I'm going to allocate the same to B1 so that's 3 times 5 so that eliminates um, B1 and A3 and also eliminates the 5 and 3 and 5 and 3 then we're going to put the 7 against C0 so C0 becomes 7 and eliminate that 
and then that leaves us with a, a 2 and a 3 and a minus sign so I'm going to have to use A0 as minus 3 and B2 as 2 sorry minus 2 and that completes all the parameters so we've now chosen a number of parameters that satisfy this equation and if I've done it all correctly that should give us a 313 to 421 gear ratio so what I've done now is put all those figures that we've just worked out back onto the diagram so over here we've got differential D1 and D2 we've got gearing ratios between these axles of 7 in this direction we've got minus 1 15th in this direction minus 2 over here 1 15th over there and minus 3 from the input to the input of D1 now looking at this, uh, probably the amazing thing is that even though we're creating a uh, gear ratio of 313 to 421 uh, each individual gear ratio within the whole structure is actually relatively modest uh, the largest being a 7 to 1 and all the rest are, uh, are either down gearings or just a small up gearing of 3 or 2 Okay, and here's the implementation of that 313 to 421 gearing ratio we've got our input over here and that is gearing that minus 3 onto this barrel here we've got the uh, 1 to 15 coming around onto uh, this barrel there that output which is this axle down here connects by a 1 to 15 in this direction uh, we've got our 1 to 7 in the middle or 7 to 1 and finally we've got a, a, a 2 to 1 coming back around in this direction um, I can't prove to you that it works but um, trust me it does I haven't counted 421 to 313 but if I've done all the math and the implementation correct then this should work perfectly thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed this video and got something out of it uh, I know it's a relatively complex um, mathematical uh, calculation but if you follow it carefully you should be able to implement this yourself as well